Well, it's not only a question of war or peace for Syria, but for the entire Middle East. Warda Khalid joins us now from Houston for more insight into the broader conflict in the region. She is a Middle East policy analyst. Why don't we start with uh, Mihal's uh, report? You know, Turkey seems to be a wild card. You've got Russia, you've got the U.S. You've got so many players there. Um, and, and the latest developments, of course, in Syria, we've seen a lot of fierce fighting, different sides trying to solidify their gains uh, before the cessation of hostilities. How do you view things right now? Well, right now it's very clear that the geopolitical makeup that's going on right now has not ended, and it probably won't end with a ceasefire. Every single party is still concerned about how things are going to play out once the ceasefire starts. So, as you mentioned earlier, Turkey is looking at um, the ceasefire and saying that, yes, we will abide by it unless we are attacked. The Kurdish forces are saying the same thing, that we have the right to self-defense if we are attacked. So everybody is saying that they're going to do a ceasefire, but it remains to be seen of how that actually will play out. Um, I think it's kind of a wait and see approach. It's very cautious, but it's kind of every man for themselves still. What's the optimistic side of you say, and, and what's the pessimistic side say? I, I don't know if it's optimistic and pessimistic. It's kind of what reality is. Um, and the reality on the situation and the ground is that it took us a very long time to get to this point. It took us five years to get to a point where the parties actually sat down and said, yes, we are going to have a ceasefire. And so this is something that's not to be taken lightly. Some people are trying to dismiss it and say that it's not going to happen. We don't know that yet. The fact that it's got things have gotten so bad that people are willing to come to the table to try to talk things out. It, it's a sort of a positive, it's a positive step, but again, it's going to remain to be seen. How serious are the parties about peace? And we know that the Al Nusra Front, ISIL, they're not a part of the agreement. So even with, with, with them not as a part of the agreement, we suspect there can still be uh, some fighting going on, correct? That's correct. So Al Nusra and ISIS are both considered terrorist organizations by the United Nations. And as such, um, all of the parties have said, including the Assad regime, um, that they would be able to fight them during the ceasefire. So that could throw a wrench into things, definitely. Um, and you also have opposition groups, which the Assad regime considers, some of them to, considers them to be terrorist organizations. Um, so it's a very complicated situation. Best case scenario would be if nobody did anything and they really allowed this ceasefire to be used to bring in humanitarian aid and help, the, help start the peace talks. Um, but of course, some fighting could break out, somebody could bomb somebody else who they consider to be a terrorist, uh, and all hell could break loose. So we have to wait and see how it actually plays out. Talk to me about the humanitarian aid piece to, uh, to all of this. Key, uh, is it going to be difficult to pull off? The humanitarian aid so far has been difficult to pull off, and it could continue to be difficult to pull off. Um, just on Wednesday, the United Nations uh, gave their first airlift uh, of 21 pallets, and unfortunately, all of those are gone. Um, Ten of them were lost, undocumented. Seven were in no man's land, and four were damaged. And the issue here is that the area where they were dropping this is controlled by the government, by the Syrian government. Um, so the concern is that the Assad regime, their soldiers, their forces, as well as ISIS, who has besieged the region, um, has besieged that area, could have gotten that aid. Um, so it's been difficult so far. Um, they've had better luck with convoys on the ground, um, but of course you would have to have permission from the various groups that have control of those areas to bring in those convoys. That might be a better approach going forward than these airlifts, um, which are just so uncertain and could be affected by things like the weather, which is what they're saying happened on Wednesday. Warda Kala joining us from Houston with uh, analysis. Thanks so much.